doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, I'm going to start, uh, before we jump into the movie, I'm going to start with a few fun questions. Uh, what is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, I would say it is for Living on a Prayer. <laughs> uh, is there anything that you collect? Anything I collect? I don't. As a, as a kid, I would collect, um, like, uh, Broadway playbills. So at my parents' house in New Jersey, there's just bins and bins, like plastic Bed Bath & Beyond containers of Broadway programs. Uh, well, it did lead somewhere, though. Yes, that's true. So it wasn't like one of those miscellaneous collections that actually led nowhere. True, true. You know? Although I did have a troll collection for a while. You know, those little, the troll dolls. Sure. That sort of led to nothing, but... I was going to say, if you would have a, a voice part in the upcoming Trolls movie... That's true. It would or be... maybe Kunal on my show is in it, so maybe I could give him my bucket of troll dolls. You have now... That would be nice of me. I'm going to do that. Right. There you go. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now I know what I'm getting for him for his birthday. Right. You need to do also as like a gag gift. You totally. Know? Like, yeah. Make a big thing about it. Okay. Don't tell him. Don't tell right. him. It's this will not surprise. be... Yeah. Okay. This, he will not see this. It, okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's going to... It's going to... It'll be fine. Um, uh, jumping into why I get to talk to you today... Uh, Talk a little bit about uh, bringing this thing to life, because not only did you co-write, you're starring, like, this is kind of one of those things where you're all in. Yeah. Um, it was a real labor of love, not to sound cliche, but it, it definitely was. We we started with this idea that we were really excited about, and we didn't leave the house until we finished writing it. I would go to work at Big Bang and then come home and write, and we were, um, we finished that in about 2013, and then we looked for a producer um, that will be willing to do it. It was uh, a an uphill battle to, to find one that would put me in the role. I think they wanted to find someone. We could get a lot more money if we made this for a bigger budget with an actress in the role that was more of a proven box office success. So that was that was a bit of a challenge. We decided to hold on to it. We kept on calling it my Rocky. There, we were going to still own it. So we did that and um, we made it, you know, on a much smaller scale. We shot for 22 days in Ohio on a shoestring budget and we had the phenomenal Duplass brothers and their executive Stephanie Langhoff behind us and our amazing director Brian Buckley who is an absolute genius and took what was on the page and um, far exceeded anything we ever could have imagined for the script. And it was important to us. We we had always said we wanted this to look like a drama um, and to be shot like a drama. We didn't want it to be a glossy, broad comedy. And Brian came in, the first thing he said to us when he met with us was, this needs to be shot like a drama. I want it to look like The Fighter. And we were like, yes, that's it. And you're like, hired. Hired, hired. <laughs> and also, like, if he has this amazing short film called Assad that was nominated for an Oscar, and it's incredible. And we couldn't believe that he was willing to direct our movie and he's just absolutely incredible. Uh, when I when I left the screening, uh, I immediately thought, and I don't know if this is going to make you happy or sad, but I'm like, kind of like a female Kenny Powers. All right. No, that makes me happy. Okay, yeah. Well, that's good. Thank so then, you. Then, then I did say that. Okay. <laughs> right. um, but it, it's unusual. The thing about the role is that it's an unusual, like it's always about the guy being a little crass. Yeah. It's never about the girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so how early on did you guys realize, you and your husband, that you wanted to tell, you know, this story, this, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think we've seen a lot of male anti-heroes on screen, and there's not so many women. I think if you look back just in film history, there's, uh, like, Betty Davis in All About Eve plays such an unapologetic, bitter, unlikable character. And there's, um, in over the years, there's been this pressure on female characters to be likable, and we've sort of moved away from that. And in recent years, I think there's a swing back, and women are creating such beautiful, complex, layered characters. And we wanted to make this a character that wasn't shiny. We didn't want to make her a, um, uh, a character that was watered down in any way. She is unlikable because she's in a very hard place in her life. She's can't be likable because she doesn't like herself and we we wanted to push the envelope of how how dark and deep this character went and sort of take the, all the vulgarity and profanity sort of came out of the the state that she's currently in it wasn't profanity for the sake of profanity's sake it was really coming out of this character's journey and whether she was male or female it's a human experience uh I don't want to get into the specifics of it, but I will say that the hardest I laughed and just like 
belly laughed and just was I'll give you all the props in the world was there's a sex scene in this movie which is I mean I, it, fantastic very well done very funny um, talk a little bit about uh, that scene in the movie I don't want to give anything away but like it's really funny thank you thank you I appreciate that um, the sex scene was something that wasn't in our initial outline of the script but you came to it later when we were putting the dialogue we we wrote it as in the script it says the most crazy epic gymnastic sex scene ever and it was bold underlined like 20 exclamation points and we bullet pointed exactly what we wanted to see the closest to a porno I'll ever write although never say never I don't right. know maybe I'll write a porno we don't I'm not, I'm not judging by don't, the way no judgments here right. no judgments here so we we bullet pointed exactly what we wanted to see and then we found um, our gymnastics coordinator Christina Basket who did all the gymnastics choreography for the movie and we sort of threw this in later. It wasn't in her initial job description that she was going to be choreographing this as well, but she did a phenomenal job and the way our director shot it was just perfection. And it's, uh, it, it's pretty epic. I have to say it, it, did, um, it did turn out the way we wanted it to and even better. And there's, I think there's even maybe even some extended footage somewhere that will <laughs> eventually <laughs> release. We, we did shoot a lot. And that room is actually available. You can rent it. It's a motel room in Elyria, Ohio, and those rings are actually in there because it's a handicap accessible room. So the rings are on the window. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, no, I mean, I was like really laughing out loud. And it's hard. You could, all of us have seen so many things in yeah. movies. So when you see something you haven't seen, it's that much better. Thank you. You know, um, uh, talk a little bit. When you, when you have a 22 day shooting schedule, uh, you are really against the wall in terms of everything. You know, so talk a little bit about uh, the challenges of trying to make a feature, 22 days, and, you know, not having, say, 10 takes, sometimes, you know, one or two, and you got to move on. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it, we shot some pretty grueling hours, and we were working um, definitely under the gun, and plus we were shooting these long hours, and then I was coming home with uh, my husband, who I co-wrote the script with, and, and writing, um, tweaking things based on location, so it was intense, and... It, when you're shooting for 22 to two days, like you said, you don't have the luxury of, sometimes we were doing one take per scene, we're like, all right, we got one of those, moving on. Um, the most we had was maybe three takes per scene, which is, it's, you have to, we, we made an effort to get what was on the page first, and if we had time, we would maybe improvise, but there really wasn't even enough time for that because we wanted to make sure that we were getting what we needed and then moving on. But the, And also the beauty, I think, of, um, of independent film and why I wouldn't do it, do this movie any other way is those that budget and those time constraints force you in a way to make creative decisions that you may not have already done uh, or already thought to do, like um, the scene in the mall that was originally shot, uh, so written for a drive-in movie theater. And we didn't have the budget or the time to switch locations. So we ended up rewriting that while we were already in Ohio and making it a, a scene at the mall. And I ended up, a lot of the dialogue was similar, but it ended up being far better than what we had originally um, con conceived as that concept. So I, I, I'm grateful for it. I think it, you have to sort of co course correct along the way and it gives you um, informs decisions. Uh, were you pulling one of those things where when people miss their comma marks, were you like, <laughs> no, you do not do this? <laughs> um, I wasn't too much of a, a drill sergeant. Look, I mean, when we were doing the scenes together, I was very much like, okay, this is my actor hat. And then when the take was over, then Winston and I would, and Brian would sometimes talk behind the camera and say like, okay, what do you think? Do we need to, to change anything? But really it was, it was very much of, all right, when I'm, when I'm in the scene, I'm not going to be the writer and and wondering like, uh, I gotta be honest with you, this is not what I've heard from the other actors. They were like, <laughs> you, you know, she was very meticulous about the commas, she was like pulling an Aaron Sorkin, it was very, very tough, a lot of stress. Yeah, did they tell you about me like hitting them in the balls? I did a lot of that. I didn't want to bring that up on camera, I thought yeah, just I'm the sorry. sex scene alone yeah, would be, sorry. you know, yeah. That, I didn't mean to say sorry, I mean uh, to say balls. <laughs> <laughs> sure. uh, well, I am curious though, uh, if you and your husband have been like continuing to write scripts and what you're thinking about doing next in terms of original material. Um, we have. We've always loved writing together so much. We started as writing partners and then it's, it evolved into our romantic relationship. And by romantic relationship, I mean we sit around in our sweats and watch The Bachelor. That's... Wait, I've lost like so much I'm respect sorry. for you right now. I'm like, so sorry. <laughs> I'm sure, okay. <laughs> uh, you um, know, I just want to say, you know reality TV isn't real. Just want to throw that out how there. How dare you? <laughs> right, exactly. How dare you? <laughs> 
I don't buy it. Um, but we we do love to write together, and we are working currently on a pilot for HBO that we're really excited about, and we also have another feature script that we're working on right now that um, we're hoping to to get underway soon. And we just yeah, I want to keep on creating these characters and telling these stories, and I hope I keep on getting the opportunity to do that. Cool. I have to.